Painting in watercolor has some practical advantages and some limitations. The best works show that limitations can be challenged and overcome. That certainly goes for works brought together by the New England Watercolor Society. To tell us about works appearing through February 26th in the Signature Members Exhibit are two guests from the Society, the President, Don Evans Scaltrato, and Vice President, Wendy Hale. Uh, thank you both for very much being with us. Thank, thank you. you. I, want, I want to start with, uh, uh, with Wendy about the, the history of this organization. This goes back to the, the 1800s. It does. And, and we're not just talking about uh, local amateurs. We're talking about some, you know, people like, like Sargent, uh, Charles Hassan, you know. Prendergast, right. to name a few. Yes, um, they created the New England Watercolor Society. Actually, it was named at that time the Boston Watercolor Society. In 1985, we decided to become the uh, New England Watercolor Society and to extend our reaches beyond the 100 miles limit that had been imposed from Boston. So, um, Well, Don, talk about working in this meeting, because I know, I know both of you do painting, maybe even primarily in, in watercolors. Yes. Um, what, what's, what's the attraction of this? Well, the medium is fluid and very colorful and unexpected things happen and I think of, of all the watercolors I know and certainly the ones that are in this show we kind of embrace that unexpected nature of it and um, and really love the fluidity and how we can capture different textures and essences of the subjects that we want to paint so I just love it I, I can't wait to sit down and paint in watercolors when I have the time I, I want to mention one painting in the exhibit that, that really uh, you know, blew away my expectations is the painting of the survivor of the Armenian genocide. And yes. I mean, if you look at the detail, it's almost like sculpture, the, the face and the hands in that painting. Yes, well, um, that's by Mary Hilt. And Mary Hilt uh, has gone through the process of becoming a signature member. And this is her first signature member show that she's participating in. So you have to get into four shows within a 10-year period, and one of them has to be the national show. So um, she got in the national show that was at um, Gloucester that we just did, so she con completed her requisite paintings. And she's done a whole series on the Armenian genocide uh, that happened, I believe, in 19... 1915. Yeah, 1915 to 1919. And um, she painted the the survivors before um, they died. Many of them have died because they're, they're really, they've, the ones that remember it and have been around are approaching 100 or, or over 100. So it's, um, it's really a fascinating project that she's done. And she has done a great job of capturing the emotion and the, the real life story that, that is in every one of their faces. So the, Bertha is a wonderful painting and an award winner. She won the, um, Marshall Choice Memorial Award. I want to ask about the uh, the Gold uh, Award this year. Uh, if someone can talk about this is the Irish Homestead. Uh, Paul painting. George. Uh, Paul George did yeah, this. Yes. yes, it's beautiful. Look at the washes on it. The goes from a cool blue, cool uh, rose on the right hand side or in the back, all the way to this calm, warm color on the back, um, and then front. I mean, just look at those washes. It's just. It's amazing. It's very evocative of John Singer Sargent. And yeah, it's reminded me of exactly. Yeah, exactly. And um, Paul George is—he's a wonderful teacher and uh, just a real, real expert in watercolor. He's—he's he's one of our best painters that we have. Yeah. There's also a harshness about this. I mean, the light and, and the texture, and obviously these are ruins essentially that we're looking at here too. Right. But this is not a very nostalgic kind of a painting. You don't have to paint nostalgic. You, know, you don't I, have I to paint say so. You don't have to paint Santa Claus. Yeah. You can paint a jumble of tools um, and do an abstract. Uh, but it, it does sort of show it, the, these old uh, homestead buildings and even the trees. They look like they're struggling with the elements almost. As if, uh, they have a Japanese sort of painter, painterly brush stroke, I would say. Yeah, and this is very... Um, evocative of, of his work. His work has these like dashing brush strokes of real confidence when he's applying the paint. So it's, it's very Paul George when you see this painting. Now, a, a totally different is the silver painting. And this is, this is back, it could be Boston or some other city, the street scene. Kathy yes, Chen. Kathy yes. uh, Chen. And, and, Wonderful. And th this is not like, uh, you know, uh, Rohan Kreit you know, with, with kids and parents in the street. This is, uh, it's almost like patterns of uh, color. Has the 
the juror said he felt the energy in this painting. He's like, when he was talking about paint, paintings he selected, he said, they need to have a lot of energy, they need to have a story, and they need to have the technical skill to present them. But what's the story here, you think? Busy street scene. Yeah. And the cut and dry, not, not warm. Well, there's, there's another um, kind of a, a vehicular picture where you don't see the vehicles, but you see the bridge that runs the Sagamore. This was yes. the bronze. Yes, the third, right here. third uh, prize. Most of us never see it from this angle, by the way. Right? No, right. He li uh, that's um, Robert Mesrup. He lives on the Cape, so he probably sees the bridge both ways, <laughs> from coming off, coming on, and underneath. Yes, it's striking. Lots of energy. You see bits of orange, which, which is the opposite of blue just vibrant. Uh, some of the other paintings you have to, for, uh, that are being lining up here, there's one that's called Weaving In and Out, uh, yes. sort, of, uh, a, sort of a still life here, here with um, apples and, and an orange. Um, talk about what was striking in this photo here. I'm not photo, but this is a painting. I said it's, I'm slipping my mind here because I it's, know, almost it's so, so realistic. The verisimilitude is, is so much like, it's almost like a photo. It is. That's Marla Greenfield. She's going to be our third painting demonstrator on February 25th. We've got painting demonstrators coming in on each of the Saturdays from 1 to 3 p.m. And um, except for this Saturday, which is the opening day. Um, Marla works in this very precise style. She, um, she uses very saturated colors, what are um, called staining colors. And they're, um, they're a little difficult to work with. The name kind of says, says it all that they stain so it's it's not like you can erase easily anything that you've done so her paintings always have a lot of confidence to them and color and still life is really her her strong place that she does but exceptional there's nothing paintings. slapdash or fuzzy about this i mean, no. I mean you, you tried paint, I mean, to get that precise that must be painstaking well, she does take a lot of time with her pieces, um, yeah. but she does a great demo. So even in an hour and a half or two hours, you can really see how her, she approaches a painting. And she works in the opposite way that watercolors usually work. We usually work from light to dark. She'll work with the shadows first and then work with the highlight areas. So she's a fascinating painter. And again, one of our wonderful members that really is at the top of her craft. And she's a past president too. Yes. Uh, w one of the other uh, works uh, we're going to be talking about uh, that's in the exhibition is called The New Republic. This is, this is not the publication. This is, uh, this is an allusion to the architectural style around the time when the United States was a new republic. I think about the classic revival style, maybe? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This uh, is Ger Gerard Doucette. He's going to be doing a demonstration. Do you have the dates uh, for that? Yes, he's doing the February 11th demonstration at the Guild. And um, he, whenever you see him in a, a show, you, you almost are guaranteed that he's going to win an award because his work is so, so beautiful. And a lot of times his, his work has people in it. Um, one that he recently had had a child and you just you like knew that child so when you look at his work you you know you know this place you've seen this place it's in everyone's history that's lived in New England so you do feel it's very evocative for you, you your heart is drawn to this place well, you I, and, and you've got this detail you get that build up of, of grit on the clapboard yeah. and, and and even the shadows the, the shadows shadow. of leaves and, and the, the reflection in, yes. in the window he's very authentic with his work and uh, a well-loved artist. Um, I want to talk about um, Wendy, the things that you can do with watercolor because a lot of us think of you know, down by the seaside, bright sunshine, uh, soft colors and, and you, you've done things about nighttime works? Yes, I, I like to do night scenes in Boston. It's one of my favorite things. I live in Boston so night scenes are a big thing for me. The reflecting lights off the cars, off the street lights off the lamppost. It just, it just calls to me. There's a striking night painting that's in the show that's, um, let me see if I've got the title here, uh, Harvest Moon New England by uh, Thomas oh, yes. Nicholas, who's, um, he's got the distinction of having N.A. after his name because he's an artist that is considered the best in America by the National Academy in New York. Um, when you see his paintings, you're like, oh, no wonder he's in the National Academy. His works are amazing. And um, 
he's he's painted a night scene that is so successful and you just don't think of those saturated deep tones in watercolor i think you know the people that average think about watercolor maybe think of really pastel-y paintings yes they think wishy-washy yeah but there's a nice pastel that's also right in the window of the guild of a little girl that um is is very pastel tones but it's all there you can see every every aspect of it even though the tones are very light so that this show has such a mix of bright colors soft colors deep rich darks and and gentle lights and, beautiful and, and i do want to ask you about one more uh, painting uh, it looks like an old building uh, but unlike the irish homestead this uh, has some more rich color in it and talk about this. This is Monhegan Island off the coast of Maine, I think. Yes, Monhegan Island is uh, kind of the mecca for painters of the world. The Wyatt's painted there and Don Stone painted there, one of our venerable members. Um, and uh, this one is Ray Andriotti, right? That, yes. That um, painted this. He's also going to be giving a demonstration on February 18th. And, um, and his work is, is so quintessential New England. He really has a sense of capturing the landscape here and expressing it in a, a brilliant way, as you can see here. We should mention uh, some details about uh, when and where, and if people want to go to the demonstrations, uh, how they can find out information about that. Well, you they're, they're on Saturdays at 1 o'clock. Every Saturday, except for this coming Saturday, this Saturday we're having the reception and awards ceremony everybody is it's open to the public and the painting demonstrations are open to the public no charge as well they're one o'clock on saturdays and then on sundays we have gallery talks at two o'clock and once again the location back there it's the guild of boston artist that's at 162 newbury street in boston off of D between dartmouth and exeter well, thank you both very much wendy hale and don heaven scaltredo thank you